Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to show you using the superb Cinema P3 Pro camera app, how to nail your focus every single time and how to use all of the features that are gonna help you do that right here, right now. So here we are in Cinema P3 Pro camera. Now on the right hand side, we've got options like white balance, ISO, shutter speed, and then focus. So if we tap on focus, that brings up our focus wheel on the right hand side. If we move that up, that brings it to a nice shallow depth of field. If we bring it down, we end up with a deeper depth of field. Now if we tap on focus, that gets rid of the focus wheel. And if we tap on the screen, we then get our reticule. So we've got auto focus continuous, which is AFC. If we move that around, it stays auto focused. And if we lock it by tapping it, that then locks the focus completely, but it only locks once you tap it though. Hence auto focus continuous. So if we tap it one more time to unlock it, move it around to the Zion Smooth 5S, tap to lock, that's now locked. Tap it to unlock it, and we can continuously move it around to find our autofocus. And if you don't want to lock it, you can just leave it on autofocus as well. That's now, on the bottom right-hand side here where the spanner is, that's a pop-up menu. So if we tap on that, we now have a bunch of camera settings for our menu. Now, as I showed you on the first part here with the spanner, we've got autofocus continuous. We also have autofocus. So if we press on that and go back into the screen, we now have AF. So what this is, is it stays auto-focused, but it locks the second you let go of it. So you don't tap it, it just locks when you let go of it. This is a really nice time-saving feature to have on the focusing. And you can do that, of course, anywhere in the screen, and it locks it very, very quickly. This is what I tend to use. It's a very good way of just speeding up your process of filmmaking. Now, if you go back into tools, you'll see we've got smooth auto-focus. Now, if we turn that off, I don't know why you would not use this, but you see a little sort of jolt and movement when it focuses there back and forth to different subjects. And the last option you have for focusing is automatic face detection. So this is face detection. It's not to be confused with face tracking, although it does do a similar job. So essentially this will lock onto your face, stay on auto so that way if you move side to side or you walk a little bit, it will stay with your face and keep your face in focus. So this is essentially like having a autofocus that you don't need to see because it will keep you in focus. You can just be in front of the camera, really good for vlogging, that kind of stuff, really helpful. And it's gonna save you a lot of time going back and forth between the camera and yourself thinking about how to reframe and get yourself in focus. Now, if we go back into the settings spanner here. Now in the tools menu, you also have manual focus loop. So if we turn this on, you have a small or large loop. I'll keep it on large, press done. And now when you press on focus on the right hand side, you now have this loop which will help you find the focus of your scene, so where you want that focus to be. Tap on that and that's where your focus will end up locking. Again, press on focus, as long as your focus loop is actually turned on on the settings, you can find anything in your shots, leave it there, tap on it and it locks that focus. Go back into settings and if you don't want to use it anymore, you can simply turn that off. As we move further down the menu, you can then see we've got reticule size. So this can change your sizes of your reticule completely. So if we tap on the right hand side to use the smaller options, you can see that now that reticule is actually a lot smaller than it was before. If you go back into settings, go to the larger set as well, we can hide the reticule info. So where it said AFC before, for autofocus, etc., we can tap that to hide it and we just get a plain reticule with no information inside. Now this is one of my favorite features of the whole app as well, is the fact that you can customize different things. So here on focus peaking, if we turn that on, you'll then see we've got a whole range of color options to use for our focus peaking. So if we stick with green, which is what it starts on, press on the focus wheel, and then as we move that, you'll see we've got these green lines now and dots appearing on the points of where the focus is peaking, where our focus is exactly where we want it to be. So if I let go, you can see those cushions in the background that are focus peaking now. If I bring the focus more towards Negan, our little character here. You can see he's now perfectly in focus. Now, if you go back to the spanner, as I said, you can change the different colors. Now, this is really, really helpful because if you're on different locations, you're not always gonna be able to just use like a white color or a beige color. You wanna be able to use different colors according to different backgrounds, so it contrasts with it, making it easier to focus peak. So now with red, this is much easier to see. This is one of my favorite features of the app is that you can customize these helpful features because you can film anywhere, anytime, and know you're gonna be able to get really fantastic in-focus footage thanks to the different colors that you can use for the focus peaking. Go back to settings, and if you don't want to use focus peaking anymore, you can simply turn it off. 
Now, if you're watching this video within the first few weeks of it coming out, focus presets are a brand new thing to Cinema P3 Pro Camera. This is actually an option that I wanted from the off when I made my last video about Cinema P3 Pro Camera, and the creator within about two weeks has made this a feature. So focus presets, if we go into the main menu here, press on the focus wheel, you'll now see, this is so good, you've got A, B and C in different colors, so they're color coordinated. Now this is basically an automatic focus pull. So you've got three different points that we can use. We've got A represented by the green dots, B represented by the orange dots, and C represented by the blue dot. So this is how the automatic focus pull works. If you press A, you can now see the focus wheel is green. So this is finding the focus for your first point of your shot. So for example, if I want the first shot to be on this character here, I'll just move that wheel to the character and that's the first point locked. You don't have to do anything else, that's it. Then if we press B, we wanna catch our secondary point for our focus. What we're gonna do is move that to the gimbal. Make sure we've got the focus in nice and tight there. Yep, so that's focusing on the gimbal. That's our second point. And now we wanna make our third point, the cushion that's in the background. So we press on C and that's represented by blue on the wheel as well, color coordinated. And we'll just move that focus further away and let go. So you can see if I tap A, that's automatically changing the focus because we set our different focus points from C to A. And we can do that to B and you can go back and forth between the three points that you've set. And it's a really easy way to create an automatic focus. And it really is for me the best way of doing an automatic focus pull on any iOS device that I have seen, including Filmic Pro. And I'm not saying that lightly because that's a very good system. Now, if you think that's amazing, I'm gonna tap on focus to get rid of all of that. Go back into settings. We're gonna scroll down the tools menu to where we have our focus presets. And you can change the speed of your focus pull as well. So that was set to five seconds, but we can change it to quicker so it's one second. And you can even use this style where you've got a rabbit that's running fast down to a tortoise that's walking slow. And you can change the speed of it like that as well, or just use the speed preset. So if we go to one second, for example, go back in, press focus. Now we'll get that focus going to C and it's in one second. And that's the same for every focus pull. So you can't change the speed, the different points of that focus, A, B, and C, but you can set them all to the same speed. So we go to C, that's just about a second. Go to B, that takes a second. And even if A is further away, that still takes a second. So the ability to change the speed of your focus pulls is a really amazing feature to have. And it's quite a high tech one that not all filmmaking apps have as well. But Cinema P3 Pro Camera does, and I absolutely love that. It's one of my favorite features. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and you found it useful. If you want to know more about Cinema P3 Pro Camera app, then check out my beginner's tutorial on that app right here, right now. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.